you know, they have, word association is a fun game. Sure. We, we played it before, but we're not yeah. going to go as in depth. Okay. We're going to try to make this really quick because there's a lot of names flying all over the place. Sure. All right. So I want a one word answer and one reason. Okay. Your top reason. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you a name. Sure. And then you, you volley it back. Okay. This is talking about in, in scope of the bills. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. If you want to see two guys eating in a car, click that subscribe button. So, free agency. We'll do free agency first. Not sure. Okay. okay. Free agency. Bell. Uh, too expensive. So it's a no. Yeah, it's a no. Okay. Yeah, too expensive. I you know I like Bell as a player, but um, you know I think when you're restructuring your offensive line, the investment that you put in Bell year one, it doesn't get your return. Okay. Right. right. I, I'd, I'd be okay letting another team make that mistake. I love Bell as a player. Don't get me wrong, but there again, the variable of the offensive line being changed so much is, is a little much for me. Brown. Brown who? Antonio. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Okay, maybe. Um, I'm out on Brown as well because he wants a new deal. Um, okay. When he gets traded, he's going to um, restructure. He wants a restructured deal, um, and that takes all the. <laughs> You can't cut him for nothing then. If he gets traded, he's free to cut. Okay. So you still have some leverage. He loses all leverage by being traded. So I'm out on Brown because he wants a new deal. Anthony Barr. Absolutely. Yeah, freak. Guy's a freak. Jesse James. Yeah, I bring him in. I, I Yeah, I'm, I'm in with Jesse James. Yeah, I, the reason I'm in on Jesse James is because, again, the tight end class is, is a little thin in the draft. So... He can start for you. He comes in, he's your starter. Kroom, you, eh, Logan Thomas is an RFA. Eh. So, again, I know people are high on Kroom, but um, I'd be okay. I'd be very fine with Jesse James because I know he can come in and start, um, and he still allows you to, to draft somebody. CJ Mosley. Oh, my God, make it happen. Just make it happen. The, just make it happen. <laughs> The, the things you could do with your defensive front with Mosley, Milano, and Edmonds is just, it's a dream come true. Yeah. It's a dream come true. You could you could give so many looks on, on a defensive front. Roger Saffold. Instant starter, right? Yeah. He's an instant starter. He brings culture into your room. He was a captain. Um, yeah, I'm down with Roger Saffold. I think he, uh, if you're rebuilding your line, I don't see a problem with bringing him in and, and give him a three-year deal at his age. I'd be okay with that. Jawan James. No. Can't pass protect. Let me, here's, here's the thing that gets me about Jawan James. He's the best of the worst. He's not a very good tackle, right? So I think he gets heralded as being really good, and I am not down with Jawan James. Mitch Morse. Starting center. I mean, Given what happened at the combine, does his stock drop? Getting him because Bradbury and Jenkins tested so well. No, I don't think so. It's one of those things. I don't I'm think so. Saying. Yeah, that's, no, that's I don't some think of the so. things that the, the effect of free agency. You know yeah, I mean? so. yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. I, I think there's guys who are immune from the from the draft class risers. You know, mm -hmm. and I think Morris and. Uh, and Matt Paradis are, are those that are exempt. Yeah. Uh, okay. Everybody else is not exempt from that class. TJ Yeldon. Is he still even in the league? He's a free agent. Yeah. Yeah, no more Alabama running backs. Next. I'm just saying. I'm just Next. saying. He's a free agent. No more Alabama running backs. Jeremy Parnell. Isn't he like 40? What are we doing talking about Jeremy Parnell? Okay, fine. I won't. <laughs> is he, is, isn't he like 32? He's 33. 30, 33? Mm -hmm. But you happened to open the can of worms up last episode, last week, <laughs> saying, hey, they could draft a 30-something-year-old uh, tackle just as a filler for three years and then have him go. Sign, you mean? Sign a 33? What'd I say? Draft. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> Chris Winkie's not bad. Chris Winkie is not in the draft, <laughs> He's draft, not in the draft this, year. this year. Um, Josh Norman. 
if he gets cut. It would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? Like, it's just one of those signings where you just go, a lot okay. Of, a lot of people, a lot of people very it. against it. Yeah. But the, the one thing that I saw that was very interesting is that someone said, a ninth, your ninth overall pick mm -hmm. for the 15th overall pick and Norman. I'm like, no, the Bills, in, in this respect, here's why I disagree with it. They're not going to give up six spots to and take on his contract. Yeah. That's yeah. not how it works. Like, oh, okay. Here, I'm going to pay you to go yeah. do yeah. something else. The fact you know I mean? is, Norman's contract, you get him for half that. And uh -huh. every team in the league knows it. So, trading for Josh Norman, you only do it if you don't think you'll be able to sign him. But the Bills have a, have a very, very, very supreme advantage over other organizations by having McDermott. Yes, yes, they do have that. With Landon Collins, the rumors of Landon Collins, mm -hmm. Norman getting up there in age, Gettleman was the guy that drafted, I believe. Did he? Wait, I, I gotta check that. I don't okay. know if he drafted Norman. He might have. If he did, him going to New York and switching well, to safety did, would be an option. They did get rid of Eli Apple. Yeah. So they got they they've got some uh, room to grow in in the secondary and with the Giants. I mean that's that's an option that they can go. Norman could go up there. It's, yeah. That's the only other viable connection. That you know, I think Norman would look at a spot to get a one-year deal, right, to reestablish his value because I think he's willing to bet on bet on himself as a player. He is. And at 32 would be tough because then he'd be out of the league at 33 if he got hurt. Right. It's tough. Yeah. He wouldn't be taking chances. He'd be making a lot of he'd, like he'd be business going, decisions. No, but he'd be going to a place where he knew he could walk in and immediately be effective and. Buffalo would be that team. Buffalo would fit that profile. A one-year, $4 million deal to try and jettison into a two-year, $12 million deal, he'd do it. Yeah. We went through a lot of them. We We're just doing a rapid, rapid fire. Because these are, these are the names that I've seen a lot of. Crabtree? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll Crabtree. I think if you get Crabtree, you're not going to put a lot of onus on getting the tight end position locked up. Yeah, because he fills that role, right? He really he's that he's that safety blanket for any quarterback, which I, I was surprised that Baltimore was willing to just part with him because that's what Jackson needs. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, well, just just to ask, right? Do you think that if you sign Crabtree that it pushes the likelihood of the Bills drafting a tight end further down the list? It does. Just for the passing game. Sure. I'm not saying for the run game, because Crabtree isn't that really good of a run blocker. I'd have to call up Frank Gore to see if that's true, but I don't th I don't see him as that huge one. Because you don't see him in, in the box right. taking on an outside linebacker. No. I, I wouldn't. No. 